Kia ora. My name is Courtney Havrilla, and this is speech number two for Professor Venter's Calm 103 course. This is my audience, my mother. We have all heard it before. We have all witnessed it. And right now we live in an age of it. Globalization has emerged in today's society as a deep and complex topic that touches upon even the most unexpected areas. From here the question arises, do we really understand what globalization is and how it affects so many different areas of life? Today I'm going to discuss a specific aspect of globalization that has to do with linguistics and the changing language, particularly in regards to lingua franca and multilingualism, and I'll explain these terms as we get to them. For the past three years, I have been studying languages in the South Pacific, and it was here that my curiosity arose about how globalization affects these languages, and my study was, my study was continued. Now, before we get into the specifics, I would like to briefly go over the concept of globalization as a whole, just to be sure we're on the same page about what it is and what it means. According to the Merriam-Webster Concise Encyclopedia, Globalization is defined as the process by which the experience of everyday life, marked by the diffusion of commodities and ideas, is becoming standardized around the world. So what does this mean? It means that if I wake up in the morning and I decide to have Kellogg's Fruit Loops for breakfast, get in my car, go to work, have McDonald's for lunch, come home and go to sleep, that a very similar situation with the same or similar brands that provided a similar idea of comfort was being practiced thousands of miles away in a very different place. I use McDonald's specifically because it is often referred to as, a, as an example of globalization. They have restaurants in more than a hundred countries so we can see that it is no longer just an American icon, it's global. Now globalization has uh, several different aspects to it, some that we hear more often than others. I know a couple of terms that I hear fairly often are global economy, international business, international trade, but as I said, I'm going to discuss the aspect that has to do with linguistics. So you might be thinking, well, how do you get from economy and business to language? And the language portion is derived from a subcategory of globalization known as sociocultural. And sociocultural is just globalization as it deals with societies and cultures around the world. So have you seen examples of linguistic globalization? Is it really happening? For some, one of the most prominent ways linguist, uh, one of the most prominent ways that linguistic globalization has made a presence is through the idea of lingua franca. In his book, From Linguistic Areas to Aerial Linguistics, Professor Peter Moiskin of Radboud University in the Netherlands describes lingua franca in situational terms. For example, if there are two neighboring communities that speak two different languages, they actually come up with a third language as a way of communicating between them. Some of you may have heard of the term Spanglish, and Spanglish is an example of lingua franca, parts of the Spanish language and English language being combined to create a hybrid language, if you will, in order for the two cultures to be able to communicate more effectively. In today's society, lingua franca has widely taken the form of English, and we have seen several examples of that. Some of you may recall former South African President Nelson Mandela and his speech he made after being released from prison. While addressing a nation with, according to Brand South Africa, 11 official languages, his speech was given in English. Russian President Vladimir Putin, at a presentation for the 2014 Sochi Olympics, also presented it in English. I'm using English as the main example because it has been recognized by scholars as the dominant lingua franca, and when we're discussing the correlation between globalization and language, it's important to know that English takes that role, and it's a very controversial role. B.K. Sharma of the University of Hawaii discusses, argues that because of the globalization of areas such as economy and business, as we discussed earlier, English is becoming a, a global language that's really necessary for those organizations, and that has become known as ELF, which stands for English Lingua Franca. On the other hand, people such as business, Harvard Business School professor Cedal Neely argues that 
English as the language of global organi organizations has made it so that non-native speakers suffer status loss because of their levels of fluency. And this might be something that y you have seen in your own life. If you or somebody that you know has ever felt like they perhaps didn't get a job because of an accent or broken English, as I've heard it called. So this goes hand in hand with another fact that is presented by uh, Martin Dewey of the International Journal of Applied Linguistics. And that states that, quote, non-native speakers have come to outnumber native speakers. That in fact, most conversations in English take place in the absence of the latter, end quote. Now, this goes into another aspect of linguistic globalization that I would like to discuss, and that is multilingualism. I'm going to do some quick math, and in this I'm going to use British linguist David Crystal's figures. If there are 800 million people who speak English as a second language, that means that at a minimum there are 800 million people who at the very least speak two languages. Multilingualism is becoming much more popular, and because of the availability of the internet and travel and programs such as Rosetta Stone or Living Language, they are all contributing to what is essentially this linguistic globalization. <clears throat> the situation, however, is much more complex and a little bit inverted from that statement. Yes, there are more individuals who are becoming fluent in more languages, but globally the number of languages is decreasing. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, better known as UNESCO, figures that by the year 2100, half of the 6,000 languages spoken today will have disappeared. Of course, in all this information, it is inevitable to ask, how is this going to affect you and me and not just our great-great-great-grandchildren? And to understand this, we have to look at where we are at in the globalization process now and what effect it has had so far. And this requires asking a lot of questions. How has uh, communication and language skills that have developed because of globalization affected our world in a positive way? How has language loss affected our understanding of history? Today I have discussed with you lingua franca and multilingualism as it relates to linguistic globalization, but I have really only touched the foundation of a much larger category. Whether you look at sociocultural or globalization as a whole, there is much, much more ground that that base covers. So, in order to further your knowledge about any one of these topics, is up to what questions you ask next. Thank you.